Hello, everybody. Welcome to a very special episode of Holly Randall Unfiltered. Today, I have multiple returning guests, Joanna Angel, director extraordinaire and also performer extraordinaire. And for the first time, I have performer and new director, Casey Kisses. Yay! <laughs> Yay! Yay! So we're here today to actually talk about uh, Casey and Joanna's new movie called Casey, um, produced by Adult Time, which Joanna directed and stars Casey and is basically about her life story, which is a really, really interesting story, by the way. So this is pretty cool because it's pretty rare that like a porn movie is based on a true story that almost never happens. Um, So like, how did this idea even come up in the first place? Um, well, I, I actually, over the years, it's almost like, I feel like I was like a Casey creep or something. I mean, this basically all started, which you probably don't remember. Um, I think it was one of the first times, um, that we worked together. We worked uh, together in San Francisco. Um, and, um, I remember we were at the airport on the way home and, you know, the flight was delayed. We were kind of just sitting around and, uh, I actually remember Casey was, on the phone um, with someone, I think, who was like fixing her bike or something. I just heard her talking about motorcycle things on the phone. <laughs> and um, I don't know, when when uh, she got off the phone, I was like, oh, what was that about? And she was like, oh, blah, 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 like something with her motorcycle, someone was fixing it or whatever the case was. And I was like, oh, that's like, that's so hot that you ride a bike. I've always thought, you know, mm-hmm. girls who ride are super hot because <laughs> mm-hmm. it's one of those things I can't do, but. <laughs> People assume I can because I have you tattoos, look like you, you know, ride a yeah. bike. Yeah, so I'm a biking poser. So to speak to an <laughs> actual biker, it's always a cool thing. And then you know, I it just suddenly it kind of clicked to me. I was like, oh, like, and she had told me that she used to be part of a biker club. Another thing, you know, always like been a fan of like any movie about bikers, you know, Sons of Anarchy and all every show. Like you know, as I was kind of a been exciting for me and and without being too creepy or asking too many questions I was like wait a second like when did you transition you know where was it pre-bike club during like bike club she's like well yeah I kind of did it while I was in the the club and I was like what was that like and and I remember she told me a little bit I remember she said she had to um turn in her patches and some people were for it and some people were against it. She told like you told me like a few details and I had 20,000 more questions I wanted to ask, but I didn't want to be like too annoying. I didn't know you that well, even though we just had sex, you know, it was like a yeah. porno, you know, and yeah, I, I wouldn't porno be respectful. Knowing. And you know, there's also the like, I never want to like, um, you know, with the friends that I have that are trans, I don't want to like ask too many questions about their transition. Like I'm some kind of, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I just don't want to be annoying. Yeah. I don't know. It's like I don't like it when people come up to me and ask me 10,000 questions about my tattoos. You yeah, know? yeah, Like yeah. I didn't want to. You never know what. Right. I don't know. Um, anyways, uh, but but she told me a good amount. You told me a couple um, really interesting stories. I remember like, a, you know, like you had told me that you had to give your patches in. I remember you told me a couple of your um, friends from the biker club you were still friends with. Some of them you weren't friends with. Um you told me some other things that I don't know if I should tell other people in the air. <laughs> <laughs> a few sexual things that happened in the mm-hmm. bike club <laughs> surrounding it. Yeah. And, um, and I was like, oh my God. And I actually like, I wound up telling like m- a lot of other people um, just what you had told me that day. I don't know. Anytime like your name came up or anything. <laughs> I actually remember for no reason at all, you know, telling Mike Quasar like, do you know Casey Kisses? Because, yeah, uh, another time when I was going to shoot her and she was coming to set, I'm like, let me tell everyone on set that she <laughs> is a biker. And I don't know, just the few details she told me. It's almost like I started showing off the story that I had nothing to do with. I yeah. was just really fascinated by it. So I feel like every time we saw each other, you would kind of get, tell me a little more and more about it, you know, because you are like a very honest, like funny, like, you know, candid person and, um, you know, you're a very open person too. Um, I was going to say I'm, a, I'm an open book when it yeah, comes to my life. Yeah, you're not one of those people you have to like walk on eggshells around to get information out of. I'm one of those people too. Anyone could ask me anything, I guess, except for about my tattoos. That's annoying. But asking me just about anything else, um, <laughs> I don't care. My life is like an open book. I'll tell anyone anything. I don't have any secrets. Um, 
Anyway, so so I had known this bits and pieces of this story um, and I'd been fascinated by the story and always wanted to know more about the story, but was like didn't want to be annoying and ask too many questions about the story. Um, and then outside from that, you know, Brie, uh, Brie Mills had talked to me about making a bigger feature this year for adult time, um, you know, and she was like, all right, I, you know, and come up with some um, ideas for good you know, traumatic stories. Um, and I just like, sometimes it's the worst thing and the best thing when someone's like, whatever you want. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. like you get annoyed when, as a director, when someone micromanages you and tells you what to do, but then at least you have something to complain about, you know, but when someone's like, like if something goes wrong or it's want. stupid, yeah, you can yeah, be yeah. like, this wasn't my, this idea. wasn't my idea. This is not like my I fault. do with every script that I get. Exactly. I'm like, this is yeah. not my idea. Not people. My idea. So like, not if you don't fault. like this script, yeah. I didn't write it. Yeah, exactly. I'm just here to, to make sure this thing in my hand comes to life. But yeah, but then, you know, she was like, you know, just think of it. But I knew she wanted it to be a drama, but other than that, I didn't really have many um, specifications. I um, mean, I had thought of a few ideas, um, none of which I loved, but they were like, you know, mm -hmm. good enough. Mm -hmm. Um, and then actually my due date for coming up with an idea happened to be the same day me and Casey were shooting, uh, content together. And it was just almost like she showed up on set and, and something did come up about, um, the new bike club you were in and you were telling me about, it and it just clicked. I was like, this is the story. <laughs> this is it. And it was really great it was like just all the stars aligned because I Brie actually was texting me that day I, like hey like didn't get an email with your idea because <laughs> I didn't love any of them and I was like I got it and I just kind of like wrote a very fast email while we were you know on set together shooting content um and then I turned around and I was like I guess I should ask her if it's okay <laughs> <laughs> by the way by the way and then I was like Casey, would I be able to make a movie about your life story? And you were like, are you kidding me? You were like, fuck yeah. yeah that's and, then, and then it was sure. kind of funny because you had this moment. You were like, can I be, can I be in it? And I was like, I'm not going to have somebody like play you. <laughs> what <are> you? <laughs> like, <laughs> Like, as long as I'm in it, like, yeah, yes, you yeah. can use the story. How offensive would that be? I'd be like, so I'm going to do this life story about you, but I don't want you I don't to want actually you to play yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, of course, yes. I was like, I need you in it. I was like, I'm going to need you, like, every step along the way, you know? And um, and I was like, okay. I was like, we'll work out all the details later. I just kind of needed to know if this was okay after I had already sent the email with the ideas. I was oh, I'm really glad she said that. Because, you know, I, I, she could have said, like, oh, it's kind of personal. I don't want it. In a movie, yeah. Which, you know, could have been. Yeah. Could have happened. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, once she said that, um, you know, after that, we, we spoke several times. And there was, like, I remember, you know, we, had, we talked on the phone, I remember, a few weeks later. And I was, like, I was, like, not expecting even I already knew a good amount of the story, but there was so much more to the story. I was like, okay, now I need to really know everything just so I could kind of make an outline for like what this movie is. And I was like, Ooh, when I was on the phone, I was like scribbling everything down like a mile a minute, you know, like asking people's names. You know, there's also she's talking about things in a lot of these very specific like biker terms. There was like a lot of things I had to stop and be like, what does that mean? You know, and anyway, and it was actually like, we talked on the phone. It was a good like hour and a half. Must have been two like hour, yeah, two hours you told almost. Me so much just so I could kind of get like an outline or figure out like what the hell like you know how how this movie is gonna get to start to to take shape. And I actually do remember, uh, you know, you can ask my husband when when we got off the phone, I started crying. I was like, oh my god, I was just I couldn't stop crying. And he was like, what's wrong? I was like. Casey Kisses is like the most amazing person in the entire world. <laughs> and that's all I said. I was like, she's such a badass. And like, I just have so much respect for her. And I was like, I have no idea how to do this movie. <laughs> I've never had anything that was I wanted to do. I had to, you know, I'm also known for usually making comedies, yeah. things that are kind of tongue in cheek. I was like, 
Oh, so I think I was kind of crying because I was really moved by the story, kind of crying because I was also, like really overwhelmed by how to, I was gonna how say, to do justice to this. You must have really, felt so much pressure. Yeah, I was like, I, you know, and not even pressure, not caring about, no offense, they know, not caring about what adult time would think or yeah. the critics would think. Or I was like, I wanted to do this story justice and, and make sure it was handled um, properly and... Um, you know, which is, it's hard to do when yeah. you're making a porn and dealing with something very emotional, yeah. you know? Um, anyway, that's, sorry, I, I always talk too much. That's um, okay. That's why you're such anyway. a great podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so that is how the origins, how, that's how this movie right. came to be. And that was step one. All right. Casey, tell us your story. <laughs> um, well, it, I mean, like Joanna said, it was like, we were on a phone for it must have been it must have been close to like two hours that we were going on and it's there's so much to the story that it had to be condensed and put in a way that we can uh, fit it in two hours I guess or however long um, the final uh, the final edition is going to be but um, but yeah I was I was basically in a motor living in a motorcycle clubhouse when I decided to transition. Um, uh, really come out. I, well, I came out before I transitioned, and because um, I was really kind of f- struggling and fighting mentally with um, sexuality and gender and just all of that at once, and none of it at once as well, because it's like you're battling with gender identity, sexual identity, but you're also it's all it's all of that, but it's all it's also got to do with none of that and just being yourself. Mm-hmm. And um, I really was like waking up every day, like wishing I was a, a different person, wishing I was in a different body. That I finally had the I, the balls to um, <laughs> to wake up and tell my girlfriend at the time that um, that I thought I was gay um, because I've had I had all these feelings, and um, it wasn't long that the bike club started finding out, and um, they actually um, approached me. Uh, this is, I guess, this part's not in the movie, but they approached me and they gave me an option to keep the patches, or um, turn them in. And um, my and, dad. Was, and then, just for people who don't know, like, so key, so when you join a gang, like a motor, I call oh, it a motor- yeah. club, That's yeah, a gang. Not, okay. not, <laughs> not gang, not gang, no gang activity. No also, gang activity. not only was she in a bike club, like, even just the story of you joining the bike club, you know, she was like. Uh, ro- like road captain you were like very high up oh like, yeah i'm yeah. I, so I, I had an officer's uh title for um for about a year before uh i got kicked out but um meeting the club and everything was like super interesting as well as um we were at a um we're at like a bar and i met my friend um who's still a really good friend of mine right now actually he was just over my house last night but i met him outside of a bar he had um he had a, a a patch on his vest that was that kind of resonated with me, and I was like, "Hey, how do I get a patch like that?" And he hands me a business card that says, "You just met so and so from this motorcycle club." Okay. And it was it was I like, know, is that how it usually happens? I I that, that was the first time. I mean, um, I, I mean, I have other experience with motorcycle clubs, but um, that was the first time somebody's ever handed me like a business card that said, "You just met this person," and he you know gave me a gas station to show up to you know at the time. Sorry, can we get business cards that say you just met Joanna Angel? I know, or you I just know. met and Holly Randall because that it, sounds like talking about yourself in the right? third person like that kind of and sounds it, really. You dope. said it was like you it just really met cool. with like a line, like you had to like fill in, like almost like so everybody in, you know, yeah. which makes it even more. Yeah, so they all write their names on the cards. Yeah, and that was one part. You know, obviously a lot of people had to read the script before it went yeah. into production, and that was always the part that anyone who would read it over would be like, um, why, why don't, why doesn't he just say, hey, come, to, and I was like. Like nobody understood that that everybody thought it was some kind of typo in the movie or like like why would a biker hand a business card? You well, know back what I back mean? then, cell phones like, weren't we weren't using right, like a ton right. of cell phones. I was like no, this is a detail we need because I thought it was like such a special, unique detail. It like, sounds you met like very this guy at symbolic. a bar and he gave you this like handwritten business card. Yeah, I don't know why I thought it was. Really I still got the card somewhere in yeah, my house. I thought it was really special. But I, I I started showing up to the gas stations where he was like, oh, meet up over here. And it would be raining, and I'd go and use my last like fifty cents on a payphone and call them up, be like, "Where are you guys at?" And they're like, "Oh, well, it's raining. You know, we're not going. We're not going out tonight." And it happened like two or three times, and then finally, when I showed up at one of the one of the meets and it was raining at the gas station, 
Uh, nobody's answering the phone, and I'm waiting around for uh, for for quite a while. All of a sudden, a car pulls up, and this dude jumps out with tattoos, and he's like bald, and he's like, he's like, oh, uh, are are you so and so? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, well, uh, he's like, we're not, we're we're I'm the president. We're not doing the ride tonight. He's like, I just had to meet this crazy motherfucker who kept showing up in the rain, thinking that we're gonna go riding. <laughs> <laughs> so he shook my hand, and I was like sitting there soaked. Um, but it, I guess that's that's basically how it started. And I started um, riding with the club. Uh, the patches um, is, is something that you're not just like given on the first day. It's not like oh well, oh you just joined the club. Here's here's a vest with patches. It's like kind of something you got to earn. And um, it and in this particular club, it's something that you earn over time. In a way that we were able to, I guess, show that to the viewer as. Um, we use a moment in, um, in my bike life, I guess, that um, that really kind of resonated with me as like, and I guess the club at the time that it was like something that was like really impactful and meaningful to them. Um, and basically what happened was uh, I showed up to, when I started hanging out with the bike club, one of my friends was like, oh, I want you to show up in my house and, you know, we'll get to hang out a little bit more, get to see more about you. And I was on my way to do laundry, so I had all my clothes in a backpack on my back and uh, riding maybe an hour to his house. And when I get there, his girlfriend's running out of the door, slamming it, she's screaming, uh, she's like, fuck you, I'm calling the cops. And I was like, oh shit. So I run inside and, he, and I'm like, dude, your girlfriend's calling the cops. And he's like, he's like, oh no, she's not. And I'm like, no, dude, she's really calling the fucking cops. And he starts freaking out. And he's like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I got all this illegal stuff in my house. And what I did was I just took off my backpack. I unzipped it. And I just dumped out all my dirty laundry on his bed. And he's like, what are you doing? And I threw the backpack on him. And I was like, fill it up. And then um, I ended up taking off and just riding to uh, his friend's garage. And we ended up dropping off the backpack. But that was a, um, it, it, once that, once I, we said we were making, once I, I posted on my personal Facebook that I was making, we were making the movie. Um, he was like, you got to put it in the story. And I was like, don't worry. I was like, of course, it's going to go in there. Because yeah. that was like a, a real um, it's, uh, yeah, it's show, she showing her loyalty. loyalty that she, and I love that part of the movie that reenacted. And also, I, you know, I wanted to figure out what in the movie what little part I could play. You know, mm -hmm. just a small like you know whatever. Cameo. So I got to play the crazy girlfriend. Oh, a cool. role you play cop. so yeah. well. It's almost like you didn't like, have to act. Yeah, it was fantastic. Yeah, so much fun. It was fantastic. It. You know, it's, it's like. 30 seconds of the movie, but I got to scream and say, I'm calling the cops, you motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, to be honest, it was, it was great. I was, I, I felt like I was like really in this moment. I was yeah. like, you're bringing me back. <laughs> like, but, but yeah, she was, you know, I think this, the whole story, the running theme, I feel like is like, you're just, it's like story of loyalty. Like no matter what you got thrown at you, you were always loyal. Like trying to get into the club, you did exactly what you needed to do, even though it wasn't, you weren't you didn't need to yet you know and then and then you know like like always being there just basically whoever was was near you or you were around you were very loyal to but they all were pieces of shit to you so it's very frustrating because you were just like no matter what you're like i'm gonna do anything this you know drug dealer needs i'm gonna do anything <laughs> my like abusive dad needs i'm gonna do anything that you know and, and i know you skipping you know over some stuff you know she when you still were um when you were not a woman yet when you were still a guy you, you really did love your girlfriend and it would hurt her that you couldn't love her in the way that you wanted to but you still tried to be as loyal to her as you possibly could for eight she, years, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but she wasn't loyal to you either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so. Wow, this is, story is definitely getting off to a really interesting start. But we are going to cut for a commercial real quick, um, and then we're going to jump right back into it, because I feel like once we really start to get into the meat of the story, I don't want to interrupt stop. you. Okay. So we need to stop now so that we can come back and not stop. So hang tight, guys. We'll be right back. If you're here, it's probably because you're a fan of my podcast, Holly Randall Unfiltered. Well, that's great because I'm a fan of my podcast too. Now, if you don't know what Patreon is, it's a crowdfunding platform that allows people to make contributions on a monthly basis. Because this podcast costs money to make, maybe even more so than others. I'm obsessed with quality. So since the beginning, I have always recorded in a studio, had a professional sound engineer, and recorded professional video. 
All of these things cost money, as you can imagine. And I also made a pretty scary decision this year to cut down on my directing gigs so that I could focus more on this podcast, which is why I need your help now more than ever. But don't worry, I'm not asking you to give me something for nothing. In exchange for your contributions, I offer so many perks. For example, access to the live streams of all of my interviews, a bonus podcast that I do called My LA Porn Life, Q and A's where the stars answer your specific questions, behind the scenes interviews, merchandise such as mugs, shirts, and stickers, access to my private Snapchat, and so much more. You can join for as little as $5 a month and help me change the way the world sees the adult industry and sex work. So take a look around and see everything that I have to offer. I really hope that you'll join and be a part of our little community. All right, guys, we are back. So Casey, continue on. So you're, you're in the club and you've demonstrated this amazing act of loyalty by like taking these guys drugs out of his house. Um, what happens next? Um, well, to be honest, I, I wasn't even sure what was in the backpack. It was kind of heavy. So it may not have been drugs, <laughs> but, um, so wait, you never looked. Oh no. Yeah. I was like, that's how loyal she was. Yeah. It's just so my wait, job. So I didn't want to, I didn't want to know. I was yeah. like, I don't know what. So to this day, you have no idea what was in there. No, there's, there's still a lot of points of the plot that like, um, people that, uh, are, um, are the, the real people that the, that the characters are based on. They're probably going to watch the movie and be like, oh shit, that's, that's what happened. Um, one of the big points is like, um, like towards the end, uh, you know, spoiler alert, but, um, like, I still don't think my dad knew they were my friends and not police officers that came to rescue me. <laughs> wow. Okay. We got to get yeah, to yeah, that that's story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What? Huh? <laughs> okay. So, so go on. So how did you end up earning your patches? Um, for, well, um, in real life, it was like a time thing in the movie. We used the, um, I guess the story of, of, uh, of, um, rebel and his girlfriend, uh, on the backpack of drugs or guns (laughs) Mm -hmm. as a, as I guess that point, that turning point when they gave me the patches. Um, so I ended up getting the patches and, um, doing a lot for the club, even further than that. Um, and that's how I became a road captain. A lot of helping out around the house and, you know, cleaning bikes and stuff. Um, and uh, I met, uh, I ended up meeting a trans woman while I was in the club. And it was like a really, that that was like a really big uh, point for me uh, in my life because it really kind of opened up my, my, my eyes to what I wanted, uh, I guess, uh, sexually. And when I saw her transition video, it resonated with me like, like so hard. And, and it kind of, it just, it, it, it made all the stars align basically. And I, I saw a clearer picture and I was like, when I saw her transition video, it highlighted that it wasn't just like an overnight thing. That's just not just, um, some cross dresser that just like all of a sudden, you know, she takes a magic pill and she's, she looks different the next day. It was this, this transition. It actually was a journey. It was like, she came from something that uh, she looks so masculine in the beginning of her transition, not to hate on her, but she became such a beautiful woman. And I was like, I was like, that makes so much sense to me and where I want to be in my life. Um, and in real life, it was a, it was a transition video that I saw, but we used a, a picture that I saw on our, on the girl's nightstand. And, um, it basically, um, kind of triggered me to want to start my transition. Um, the day, that my dad was getting released from jail though. Uh, he was locked up for about 15 years. Um, and he it really wasn't the biggest part of my life. So I was like, really don't know him too well. Um, he, uh, he was getting released from jail. Like, and, and when they release you from jail, they're not like, Oh yeah, he's going to be released at four o'clock, you know, on this day. It's like, they'll give you a day and maybe he will, maybe he won't. So I'm literally sitting outside of the jail the entire night. And, uh, that's when the bike club decided that they want to come and take my patches. So what happened, what happened in real life is, uh, I joined, I just joined Facebook and, um, I didn't really know too much about, uh, how like the relationship thing works. And she added me as like, um, like we're dating. And if you look on her profile, instead of saying like, 
uh, she changed her profile picture. I said he changed his because she had transitioned and she've had she's had that profile for so long. Mm-hmm. So I immediately got a call and I said, "We're coming to take your patches." And this is because they found out through Facebook that you were dating a trans. Yes. Person. Okay, gotcha. Mm-hmm. So they ended up showing up at at, at the jail. Oh, it was like the worst. It was the worst day ever because, um, you know, uh, right before the right before that. Right before, right before um, they found out and wanted to take my patches, right before he got released, I was thinking, you know, this this guy has been in jail for 15 years. He doesn't have any clothes, any shoes, any money or any toothbrush or anything like that. So I threw a fundraiser for him. So when he got out of jail, he's got all these people that he wanted to thank. And I had to uh, immediately be like, well, um, I'm not part of the bike club anymore. And fuck those guys. So the next day, he's, like, really pressuring me as, like, why did they kick you out? Like, what did you do? Like, did you kill somebody? You know, do you owe somebody money? And I'm, like, no, it's not that. I'm, like, don't worry about it. Because I was so afraid of, you know, coming out to him, especially as, like, you know, um, an attempted murderer, you know, locked up out of jail for 15 years. Like, this guy's hardcore. Um, But um, he, he pressured me and he asked me. And I, f- and I came out to him the next day and I said, well, they kicked me out because I'm gay, because I'm trans. Um. I guess we could uh, LGBT is like a good <laughs> like reference point for that yeah. for for then, but um, I came out to him and he actually he initially had a good reaction to it. He was he was like, oh well, you know, I was uh, always thinking if when I was locked up, you know how um, what I how I would re- react if one of my kids came out as gay and and he's like, you know, uh, he's like, I'm always gonna love you. He's like, I, th- I still want to thank those guys for all the stuff that they gave me, and uh, but um, you know, I'm always gonna love you. Um. I guess fast forward two years after I started um, my transition, uh, it, the relationship and living together became really toxic. It's not like he's upset at me for being trans or LGBT because that's something he was accepting of, but it's like he has got anger issues. So the reason why he was in jail. So he wakes up one day and he's really mad at, um, it was like something like at t or something. And I was like laying on my bed and he's like screaming. He comes in my room and he asks for a lighter. And I was like, dad, you're freaking me out. Just get out of my face and come back when you're calmed down and I'll give you the lighter. And then he gets up in my face and um, just starts hitting me. So I had, and um, when I was trying to escape, he grabbed me and started choking me by my neck. And I didn't have any other choice but to stick my thumb in his eye, which is what I did. And um, uh, it got him off me, and it was probably the nastiest thing I've ever done, especially to somebody I care about so much. Um, but uh, it got it got him off me, and what he did was he ran outside and kicked over my motorcycle, and he's like, if you want your motorcycle, he's like, you're going to have to come through me. So my here's my 600-pound motorcycle laying on his side. is <laughs> my only option of actually getting out of there and just being completely terrorized um, terrorized by, by him at this point. So I called um, the person who originally gave me the uh, "you just met this person" card, mm-hmm. and uh, he he wasn't able to show up. But uh, he called he called the rest of the club. That the people that showed up to take my patches were the ones that showed up to my house and and my grandma. She's like, she's like, "There's police at the door," and I was like, "What do you mean there's police at the door?" So I run out and I look, and it's like it's like the people that kicked me out of the, the club. They're dressed like. Like uh, sheriffs, it says sheriffs on their shirt, and my and right, so they got all these clothes from like a thrift store, and uh, like a police officer donated uh, old like uh, I guess uh, work uniforms to a thrift store. They they found them and they were using them <laughs> for the entire time. So um, when we went to get the bike, he was uh, it, he was pretty docile when he saw the uniforms and stuff, which is which is really interesting because I was thinking about it, I was like, man, if he if he ever sees this, uh, which he might, it's a really good possibility he'd probably. We'll be like, holy shit, those weren't cops. <laughs> I probably could be. So they ass. just went and got a bunch. Okay, I, I get it because I've seen that. Like they, you know, it, I've seen people wear like sheriff shirts and stuff. And, like they think it's cool. They have an actual like cop uniform. But were they all they have, wearing like, it together? Like, was it a joke or were no, they, they using it to try to like they get things so, so done? Her dad would. They put it on purposely down. because of your father. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so gotcha. he would be scared of cops because he wouldn't want to go back right, to jail right, right. if they oh, just showed up and right. they're like, "Fuck you." Bro. Yeah, then he would have might have. So it him. wasn't just like a regular Halloween costume or anything like that. It was like <laughs> so uh, it was like legit. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, because these shirts. Um, that so in in Florida where I'm from, this like they have these. Uh, they had very specific colors on their uniforms, and it's this was a legitimate 
police uniform. Right, okay, gotcha. They showed up with, with their cargo pants and everybody had them like tucked in and boots yeah. on and stuff. So it was like, it was, it was like, I looked at them and I was like, oh shit. And I had to register their faces in my mind before I was like, oh, that's not, I was like, yeah. I was like, great, I'll go inside. I was like, I got this handle. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. So yeah, in her moment where she was scared, she called, you know, the people that they kicked her out, but they, they still came through. You know, yeah, that's really kind of interesting. Unique. So did your relationship with them change after that? Uh, the dynamic did. I started living with them for um, I lived I lived with them for about a month um, before uh, I could get back on my feet. Mm-hmm. And living with them was a little different. It wasn't like the same dynamic like, oh, hey, let's let's be best friends. And, you know, like, let's go. Let's all go on a ride. But it was like they still care for me and I still care for them. At this point, though, um, we're we we are really good friends. I, I still I still um and can am connected with them, um. But I, but I'm obviously do, doing my my own thing. And I think loyalty is something that should be like a two way street and not just like a one way thing where it's like, you know, oh, when you want to be loyal, you could be loyal. Or like, oh, you see somebody doing porn and you see somebody going to the AVNs and then they're like, oh, I want to, you know, I love to go to the AVNs with you, but it's like, well kind of hated on me for being yeah. trans and wanting yeah. to do porn when I first started. So it's, yeah. you know, it's, it's, I, I think it's a chapter that I, you know, need to kind of move past. But as far as um, being in a motorcycle club, I think that's something that I'm still aspiring to do. And it's, it's, a, it's a goal line that I'm still after. During the filming of the, of the actual, of the movie, we were, I had, I was starting to join a new bike club actually. And some of the members uh, that were extras in, in the movie and, Let's, yeah, so it was kind of cool. I got to like talk to the people in her newer bike club, like, like uh, to be in the movie. So it was cool to yeah. get to talk to them because I felt like I was like getting more insight into her life. Right. You know what I mean? So when I was booking them to be non sex roles, I was like, so tell me a little more. You know, like yeah. it was just good to really see in real life, like how you are. In a bike club. Yeah. yeah. What's interesting is they ended up kicking me out too. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, a- after the movie wrapped? Yeah, after, well, yeah, after yeah, the movie. Yeah, was after the movie. I was really bummed about that. Yeah. Well, they're not getting yeah. a free fucking DVD. Yeah, we know, can tell exactly. them that much. <laughs> I was like, what? I just, I thought, uh, yeah. Yeah, well, it was, like, it was over something yeah. stupid and unrelated. It was like, uh, it's like, I got in an argument, but I was like, at least that's more badass than getting kicked out for being trans. Like, <laughs> it's like, oh, I got in a fight with somebody. <laughs> Well, I mean, I don't know. I mean, you know, you know, obviously better than than me or Joanna. I mean, you know, I think following that path to becoming trans and and really like, you know, going through with trying to that journey of trying to find who you really are. That's I think that's pretty badass. Oh, absolutely. And I hope that this inspired. And I think one of the one of the biggest points that um that I wanted to make, I guess, with, and tell a story or that I want, that I hope to get across with it is that not all trans people start on the same path. It's like, we're not all the, we're not all the same. And I hope to inspire other trans women that are from the uh, other beginner trans women that are uh, in different aspects of their life. And, you know, not everybody starts out as like uh, uh, doing drag or, um, you know, st- starting out super feminine. It's like everybody has their own and it doesn't mean that you can eventually you can't eventually reach your goal like I did because it's totally possible and it's totally worth it to see something that might be um so far out of reach to work hard and to go towards it and to go after that every every day it's you know it's, it's really been something that um that is in, that that has pushed me to, to continue on on other ventures and I hope that it inspires other people to push on with their event their ventures as well yeah, because I mean, being in a motorcycle club is kind of one of the most like hetero masculine things yeah. you can do, right? And I mean, it's intimidating enough. Yeah, even when you're not transitioning, right? You know? Exactly. <laughs> so, and I and I guess that also speaks to your point that you know people, you know, one does tend to stereotype all trans people as having been a certain way before right. the transition. Like, oh, like, you oh, know, you were, you were this, you were this I'm not surprised you were, right, right, right. but it sounds like, you know, for you, you almost seemed like on the opposite side of the spectrum yet, you know, that was, that was your calling. That was your ultimate. I feel like I kind of had to be, and I feel like it was also a blessing because I have, um, I, I mean, my father was locked up. I, I didn't, I grew up without a father figure and you can imagine my little sister, 
uh, or even my older brother, you know, we, we kind of had to rely on each other. And especially like my little sister, I took, I was able to take care of her. And I feel like, you know, with, uh, with uh, the, the body that I had and, you know, I feel like everything kind of works out for a reason and everything was kind of meant to be. Mm-hmm. And then also, and you're still in bike or you were in a bike club you're still obviously really into riding your bike yeah i got a club so, i'm hanging out with too yeah so club. <laughs> Third club. i mean again it's like you can be trans and still like have all these other interests that one might only say like is a very hetero right no there's like masculine interest but my, my mom my mother rode dirt bikes i mean i didn't know her very well but she rode dirt bikes my sister was like i taught her how to do makeup like i, I always looked up to it. my aunt she's like uh she's like a rancher she has like horses and she goes out and it, it doesn't stop her uh, from being feminine or from being a beautiful woman and those are the women that i looked up to i wasn't looking at like uh like kim kardashian and being like oh i want to you know have a fat ass and you know like uh, you know yeah. start twerking around and shit i was like i want to i see these these powerful women that i've really looked up to and i was like i want to be like that mm-hmm. you know yeah so not like just conforming to the stereotypical gender roles yeah 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 so how did okay so you left the um you left your father's house you were staying um with the bike club what happened from there like when did you actually transition were you starting to transition when By you were living point, with she your was father already, yeah when you've she was already transitioned oh, so yeah, I, well yeah. i was like three parts to this I feel like transitioning is like an ongoing thing. I feel like there's okay. never like you're done transitioning. I feel right. like I'm still, I'm, I, there's still things that I'm trying to, wanting to do and to get done. But um, at but that point. When, the, the, when they rescued you. I was a beginner. You already, tra- I was a beginner yeah, trans. I was like, PC. yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. I was identifying as, uh, as female and I was presenting as female and stuff like that. But um, uh, in the in the movie, I didn't really stay with them. I just told them that I'm gonna uh, take off to become a porn star. But it was actually a long, even a longer struggle. That's why we had to condense it and get it down to, um, to the movie that we have. Um, but I ended up um, basically I, I moved back in with my dad and was like, "This is something that I have to. This is a feat that I kind of have to get over." Um, because the internet, the internet at the clubhouse where I was staying, they didn't have internet. So I was only, I was stuck doing like phone sex, like night flirt and stuff like that. Wasn't able to make really good money because Chatterbait is really where I make really good money. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I got to go back home and cam at least a little bit till I um, can figure out what I'm going to do. And when I went back home, it was like, it was even, it was even worse. It was like, <laughs> it was, uh, it was like, it, it was like really, uh, it was like escaping a horror movie every night. But um, I ended up getting booked with uh, Cora Del Rio, who's a really good friend of mine. And we uh, have you ever seen Step Brothers? Yes. You know, and he's like, uh, does this make uh, does this mean we're best friends? You want and you yes. want to go do karate in a garage? Totally had that moment. We're like best friends. And she was like, oh, I'm moving to Las Vegas to move into a house with a bunch of trans porn stars. And we have an extra room. And I was like. Well, maybe <laughs> the stars line. I might be able to do porn, and sure enough, I um, you know, they the people at the house at the time liked me, and I met my girlfriend Kylie LeBeau, and um, we it, it was immediately like once we once I met her that it was like we're um like we're best friends as well, and we're just like inseparable um from there um for the movie I had it or well we had it so when I made it to Las Vegas. Um, Owen Gray and Kylie are um, walking down the stairs and wanting to do a cam show with me, um, which ends up being really successful. And um, I really, uh, I, I got, uh, I had the creative freedom of uh, picking who I wanted to uh, work with, and obviously I chose my girlfriend. And uh, I think Owen Gray is such a wonderful, wonderful performer um, and person as well. I finally got to work with him uh, just a few months prior, and not only I had a great time, but I was like the w- the way my girlfriend's eyes were like rolling in the back of her head. I was like, we gotta have Owen in this movie, yeah. And since he doesn't really shoot um, mainstream stuff anymore, um, it was it was uh, it made it that much more of an honor to have him in the film, mm-hmm. right? So um, let's talk a little bit about the production. So I know that, um, so I actually had Dante Cole on uh, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Who, um, you know, had wonderful things to say about you. And he talked, 
He talked, he, he didn't want to talk too much about the movie, actually, because he knew that you guys were coming on to talk about the movie. He's like, I don't want to talk, it's Casey's movie, I don't want to talk about it, but it was a wonderful honor to play her. So he plays Casey um, before she transitions. Yeah. I mean, that that was a very big challenge. Yeah. I mean, Dante was kind of the obvious answer. There's so but, many reasons why Dante right. is perfect but, for that. But, yeah. you know, that that was the one thing about this story, because after she told me the story, I was like, well, there's so much that happens in the movie and in this story, like the majority of the story happens before you transition. Mm-hmm. Um, so we need a, the star of this movie to be whoever can play you as as a man, you know, and that that's a hard mm-hmm. role to fill, you know, for multiple reasons. Yeah. Um, and um, Dante was so perfect in every way. If only he was like, a foot taller. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the only part I of did kind of like, notice that in the trailer. I yeah, was like, mm, that's, okay. that's okay. Whatever. What what can we do? What can I you mean, do? It was literally, you know, um, I tried. I was like, should I try to like always have her like sitting down when like uh, it just didn't. It, at a certain point, you have to just yeah suspend, you know, belief like we did when we watched um, sitcoms growing up. Right. And one day, like a character is just a completely different person. We have to like pretend it never happened. Right. You know? Or you just know, like Spiller. accept the fact that everybody like everyone on Friends could work in a coffee shop. Exactly. And could afford, like, a really nice for penthouse sake, apartment yeah. in New York. But like, yeah. Um, so, you know, when I talked to to Dante um, about this role, I mean, he was so honored. Also, just like like you guys are such good friends and you both ride bikes together all the time. You've like you've had sex, you know, <laughs> there's like for so many reasons. And, you know, he took the role so seriously. He spent a lot of time like I know just watching like YouTube and whatever videos of you to really get like the mannerisms down of how you would speak. Um, I thought that was very special. Um, but just casting the movie was, you know, was was challenging I mean I I had to figure out who was going to play you I had to figure out who was going to play the role of your father you know and that was a very difficult yeah difficult thing but also like to play seeing in the trailer who played the father obvious I mean yeah it's like Tommy can do anything Tommy was so amazing yeah It it was my first time working with him and just to watch him I feel like I learned so much and he brought so much respect to the story. Like he was, he came up to me and he was like, I wanted to let you know that this means so much to me. And I he took it so seriously. It was, he was the best person for it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, and it, that was such a complicated role to play because your dad, you guys had so many, I mean, so many like really touching moments, like, let, like any person, yeah. he's not all evil, you know. Yeah. Of course, you want to think a dad is evil who, who tried to like basically kill you, <laughs> but you to make it a, I mean the the reality of the story was why it was so heartbreaking is because he, you could tell somewhere inside he really wanted to be a good dad, but mm-hmm. it's it's yeah. you know there's there's some good elements about him, you know. Oh yeah, I mean that's what makes it complicated, right? Um, anyway, so so um, you know, Tommy did it. So perfectly. Um, I mean, and there is like one scene with um, Tommy and and Dante when when he first gets out of jail and they're and they're eating dinner and like it was just it it's in my time in porn it's like the most beautiful, perfect like acting wise I've ever seen. I mm-hmm. mean, like once we called cut, everybody was like in tears, you know, because it's yeah. a very special scene. You know, yeah. when he first got out of jail and he's sitting there being like, I'm so proud of you for being a road captain in a bike club. Like, wow, my son, that's amazing. And and like that was the point of the movie where he had been kicked out of the club recently, you know. So there's first of all, like, how do I tell my dad that I was kicked out of the club? And how do I tell my dad why I was kicked out of the club? You know, there was just mm-hmm. like so many layers that um, it was just so perfect and so beautiful. Um, I, I mean, everybody did a really a incredible job in the movie. Um, and, you know, that this was there, there was like a lot of sensitive matter in there, um, you know, and being that it's our industry. And um, I do think things have come such a long way in this industry. Um you know, I had to make sure to to tell everyone, even if they were in scenes that were 
not with trans women, even if they were boy girls sex scenes with that with a cis girl in it. I still right. I just want to make sure that you know you're in a movie where there will be trans scenes in it. And this is a story about a trans, you know, like I wanted everybody to come to set fully prepared because, you know, I booked the movie so far in advance where the script wasn't ready. And, you know, a lot of times you just say, hold this date, but you don't. Right. So I had to tell everybody everything. Um, of course, everybody was on board. It was a yeah. good way to see, you know. But it is one yeah. of those complicated situations because you and I have both been in the industry for a long time. Oh, yeah. and I mean, we've seen the time period. Ago, I think even if they were just have been on set different. up for it, they would have mm-hmm. said no. And yeah. I'm so thankful that didn't happen because then I would have had to like hate people that I really like. And um, yeah. that would have really sucked. You know, yeah. there, <laughs> there's certain people that I, you don't know how they're how they're going to feel. Yeah. Um, and, you know, Casey across the board just has such a, badass reputation you know like Charles Dara and Derek Pierce even though they've never like worked with you like they have so much respect for you you know they and they you know they love like they you guys all share like the love for for riding a motorcycle like they they were like wow that's so badass you know like they they look at you like like a like a rider like anyone else you know um which I thought was was really cool um one aspect though where i it was actually this ironic part of the pre-production of the movie where i felt like i was living inside of the movie um i did have a particular location booked originally um uh we were going to film um part of this movie in an actual biker club that gets rented out as a location um i'm sure i maybe you've shot there at some point i don't know it's a it's a it's a biker club that, that people do rent out for movies mm-hmm. and stuff. And I had it booked pretty far in advance. Um, you know, I told them it was for adult and they're like, oh yeah, we've, you know, we've rented out to plenty of adult before. And then something just kind of came to me. I mean, this was weeks later after I was already like at the point where I was like, okay, it's a month early and the whole movie's booked. Go me. Yeah. I'm so happy. You know, yeah. I have all the locations booked. I have all the talent booked. Like, okay, now I can like start working on other things. And like something just came to me. I was like, I should, you know, real, especially knowing now so much more about real bikers. I was like, and from knowing from her, I'm like, there's a lot of homophobic bikers out there. I guess I should tell the owner of the bike club that we're renting the space out from as a location that, that this is a movie with you know, trans sex scenes in it, you know, and, uh, and, and has this matter. And, um, I was like, Hey, uh, and I, I actually, I was booking it through one of those location agents. Mm-hmm. I wasn't even talking to the owner of the actual bike club. And I'm really glad I wasn't cause I probably would have been murdered by now because I had words to say, but I, I texted the location agent. I'm like, um, I don't know if this this really shouldn't make a difference at all, but I just want everything out in the open. I want everything to be clear. Um, I just want you to know that there, and at that point, I wasn't even sure where the sex scenes were going to take I was place. Gonna so I didn't even know if, if that, if there was going to be sex, I was, and I even said, I'm like, I'm like, I just want you to know that this is a movie that has, you know, trans sex scenes in it. Um, and there's, you know, going to be trans and, and gay people on set so i want to make sure because they did say that as part of the location that the somebody from the club had to be there just to you know make sure you didn't remember i was like i can't and i wasn't even really i wasn't even asking if it was okay i was just saying i want to make sure who's on set is not gonna be weird about it yeah you know (laughs) and uh, i wasn't even saying is it okay if if we still shoot there i was more saying please make sure that whoever is sent to set is aware of that and mm-hmm. doesn't say anything stupid. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And um, he came back with like, you guys can't shoot here. And I was like, are you fucking kidding me right now? And I was like, I was like, actually, now that I'm more into the script, like there's not even going to be any sex taking place there. I We're just filming the movie there, you know? Just the dialogue stuff. Just the dialogue. And he was like, no, we can't. We, we can't. We don't want anyone... Um, wow. We don't we don't want anyone to maybe recognize the location and like associate it with anything gay. And I was like, it's not even gay. Wow. It's a 
fucking woman and a man having sex. <laughs> just a woman is trans. Like, and I, it shouldn't even matter if it was gay, but I was like, it, I was like just getting mad at the terminology. Yeah. Like, it's not even gay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and like, and like, I was like, are you kidding me right now? And he was like, yeah, yeah. Like I'm, I'm serious. And, and at least I was very like, did this movie very early? Because imagine mm. this was kind of just came to me. Like the day before. The day before. Like the day imagine of, them if you happened hadn't the day asked. of. Yeah, I know. And I was like, you can tell them to go fuck themselves, you know? Yeah. And I was like, they are so stupid. And I was like, and they will never, ever, ever get my business again. And that's very stupid of them because I shoot movies with a lot of tattooed people and a bike shop would have been a very good thing to have <laughs> regularly. <laughs> and I will never, wow. ever, ever. I was like, they can go fuck themselves. <laughs> that's crazy. Look at, it's, and it's, I was so mad. I was, and it's a good thing I wasn't talking to someone directly from the club because they probably would have said something that would have gotten me killed. But, um, Locations are always like our biggest problem. Like whenever Such people a ask me about, I know. They and always... that is why I say everything now. <sighs> yes. Things that you would assume would just be a given. Yeah, you can't. You know, assume. you can't assume. Locations. I mean, we've all dealt with. Yes. We could have a whole five series episode about fucking shit locations. that's happened to us at locations. Yeah. So if anyone wants to know why all porn is shot on the same white couch, it's because that is the only place we can go without having a problem. <laughs> the place with the white couch. We know true. if we go there, there's not going to be an issue. Yeah. No one's going to be kicking us out. No one, you know, there's not going to be yeah. any surprises. Um, so that was so crazy because I'm like, I feel like I'm living inside of the movie. This is literally a movie. You, you about, literally got kicked out of a bike club. Uh, uh, cl yeah, I got kicked out of a bike club. <laughs> and I was so mad. Um, anyway, fortunately, um, uh, uh, Kylie Ireland, you know, saved the day. Um, Did she build you she one? Went, she, she built me a oh. bike club, which wound up being so much better anyway because yeah. I needed her for the whole movie. I didn't even, you know, because she wasn't um, working on... Yeah, she had her staging yeah, business. Yeah, she had her staging. Yeah, she had another business. Yeah. So somebody had told me they saw her on set, or the, I don't know, whatever. In any case, it was it's funny meant to be just like everything else. Casey because Casey Calvert it, well, came to me asking for a set designer. I was like, "Oh, Carrie, Carrie Kylie's available yeah. again." And she was like, "No way!" And yeah, then like, and then I, the word spread. The and word spread and really like, fast because we need. I set think designers. it kind of started from so that bad. movie where I kind of put the word out. We're like, she's back. <laughs> we all need her. She was fantastic. Oh, I she was amazing, her, yeah. and she got every single you yeah know, last yeah, no, last detail incredible. right. Um, but uh, almost too good in certain instances. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I know. I was oh, like, yeah. oh, maybe we should change that and not piss off a whole bunch of bikers. <laughs> oh, yeah. is it like like what? We don't want to. We don't want to put in certain insignias that are like but are like um re related with like a uh, really hardcore motorcycle clubs. Yeah, that happened at one point. Oh, um, I was like, oh no, this is I was like, it's very accurate. But it's just too accurate. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, she yeah. made the yeah the, the, one of the logos. There was like, like a logo clothes. that really well done. <laughs> yeah, I guess it. What was their issue? It happened it was like, we were like, an action. And you were like, wait. And I was like, not action. So the, One moment, please. <laughs> so all these like, motorcycle clubs, um, if you ever seen like the back, pat, the back pieces and it says like mm -hmm. the name of the club and then it has their mm -hmm. logo and mm -hmm. thing on the bottom, it's, it's more of a, tra a traditional motorcycle club um, um, uh, back piece. It's called a three-piece patch three or a three-piece rocker and um it it started from back in world war ii when all the vets come back um that were doing they would paint it on the side of their airplanes and um they started riding motorcycles and that's what kind of started um the entire motorcycle uh club riding community yeah, the mc community and uh, that's not something i wanted to portray um i was in a riding club so it, um, um the club that i was in we did have three-piece patches but i didn't want to put that i know it, um the this that's particular style means a lot to people that have fought for it and you know fought for their own patches so it's not, not something i wanted to have a bunch of pe of civilians i guess wearing as like extras and stuff like that it's good that you had that kind of insight to bring to because you know obviously none of us would have thought about that and it was like on the entire back wall of the set that was just yeah. built so I was <laughs> yeah like, let's figure something out i was like we can put a flag on top 
There you go. Yeah. Put a flag there. So I did. God I did. Bless America. <laughs> I did try my day. best. I did try my best <laughs> yeah. to not offend any bikers. So if there's any bikers watching this and you see something in the movie and you're like, oh, she's a bitch for putting that in well, there. Well, I just... hope we offend the homophobic ones. Well, yeah. Well, I mean. <laughs> 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 yeah, but uh, I don't want to. I don't want to. Um, I guess get yeah. shot. In the no, head. that there was so <laughs> many things to keep in mind while making this yeah. movie. Yeah, yeah. So we're dealing with sensitive matter and and dealing with a lot of even some of the terminology we the used. Terminology, there was like we yeah. had to kind of like tiptoe around it. I mean, it's uh, I don't. I mean, and even in the trailer I'm, and putting it out there, these are things that I was called, and it's it's kind of true to um, it's kind of true to story. But I, at the same time, I don't want to offend anybody by. You know, the part with he's like, oh, that's Robert. He's a guy. It's like, I mean, obviously trans women are not men, you know, I mean, but that's the way people talk. And, mm-hmm. you know, I, I don't uh, I, and I'm, I'm sure we're both on the same page. We don't want to offend anybody with that. But it's right. No. And that was hard, too, because, you know, like like a lot of people, I mean, most people, most people don't really read their scripts until they get to set. Sure the don't. Day before, especially if they're working a lot and especially if they're not like the lead of the movie yeah. or something. And yeah, I mean, I've done the same thing and especially I'm the director and I haven't read my script <laughs> before I've gotten to set. Yeah. Also, I've done it. <laughs> if you're like blessed and cursed with the ability to like, like I know I can not, I'm, and I'm not like bragging at all. Like I know I can, I can memorize a lot of dialogue pretty fast, you know? Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, I do remember there was, you know, kind of a moment, um, because Charles Dare, he knew it was a biker movie. He knew um, it was a story about her life. And like, I don't think he really knew what the movie was about. So I kind of saw him like, like you know, he was like, what scene are we doing next? Because, you know, mm-hmm. um, and then he, you could tell he was reading it. And I was like, you didn't read the movie, did you? <laughs> and he was like, he was like you know, because he didn't have the parts that he had were. I'm not calling him irresponsible by mm-hmm. any stretch of the imagination. The parts that he had were not, he probably skimmed through it. He's like, all right, I'm only doing three pages tomorrow. I'll read he it. read his like, parts. You yeah. know what I mean? And then I was like, okay. And, and you know, it was sort of an important part. You, you can't de- depict this kind, you can't have this kind of, you need somebody to play the homophobic person. Yeah. We actually needed multiple, multiple people to play that. So I think right. it, that was kind of a moment too, where he was like, I don't want anyone to think that I'm like, I know, but like, if we don't have the asshole in the movie, <laughs> we can't make the movie, yeah. <laughs> you know, we have to show, yeah. you know, her as a, as a man getting patronized, you yeah. know? So like, I don't know. So that was kind of a thing too. So it's almost like, um, I, but I think anyone who watches the movie will have to know, like, like you wouldn't have been in this movie if that was actually right. yeah. who yeah. you were, you know? <laughs> the fact that you were even in the movie yeah. shows you're not homophobic. I think we were about to, we were about to, to start rehearsing and he sees, you know, the word faggot and, and like, Oh, that's a fucking dude. You know, like, we're, like, like talking to, it's um, got a lot of shock value to too. Chloe yeah. K, you know, where he, where he's calling a, a trans woman, a dude, you know, and then he, for a second, he's like, what, what did I just agree to do? And I was like, <laughs> okay, let me explain to you the greater context of this movie. Cause I understand that you didn't want to read like, like the 85 page script, you yeah. know, but like you have to be the asshole in the movie. That's what yeah. you were hired to do. And if there wasn't somebody saying, that, you know, so that was kind of a thing too, because I get it. He had to, yeah. he is not, he, he does not use those words and say those things. And he had to he, say Charles that was, yeah. he is one of the coolest yeah. people I met on set. He had, like, like Joanna was saying, he had a lot of respect for me. and Totally, yeah. He yeah. Would, But he was such a believable douchebag. Yeah, like, he did such a good job. I, was I think like, once I explained to him, like, we need you to be a douchebag for this movie to really hit where it needs to hit. And he was like, got it. I was like, I was like, I don't want to cross this guy the wrong way. I was like, this guy's tough as hell. No, I mean, he is like such a great actor. When he becomes, what is it, Carl? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's different, different person. But he's actually really lovely. In fact, if you want to get to know Mm -hmm. the real Charles Dara, you can go watch my podcast interview with him which I actually filmed at the very beginning of when I started doing this show. Aww. And um, it's actually a lovely, very insightful interview. He's actually a very he's a spiritual person. person. Oh, yeah. He's super yeah. spiritual. He's super fascinating. Yeah. But yeah, that was a funny moment on set where he start, we start rehearsing and it's like, you fucking faggot. And he's like, wait a second. I don't, I can't <laughs> say, the, you know, and I'm like, yeah. let me explain to you. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, so that was, that was. That's know, hard. Kind of, that's yeah, a hard thing that. too, you know, and we're, we're dealing with so much, uh, unique material yeah um but uh yeah there was a a lot of a lot of challenges um but over you know also i had to find lots and lots of people that knew how to ride motorcycles um it's kind of funny (laughs) 
<laughs> another story that makes sense with all the stories I tell about me and my husband, you know, because my Aaron small hands, he, he had, he had a part in the movie. He actually played like her, her best friend, mm-hmm. you know, the one that got her in the bike club. Mm-hmm. And then it, I was like, um, Aaron, do you know how to ride a motorcycle? And he's like, I have once. Or like, or or I, you know, and I can't remember if he said I have once or I used to or I, I have a long time ago. Whatever he said in my mind was like, yeah, sure, I can do it. (laughs) So I wrote in all these parts. That's what you wanted to hear. That's kind of what that that is what I heard, actually. (laughs) But you know, it's kind of his his demise that whatever you tell Aaron to do, he figured out figures out how to do. So I just Mm. figured this was one of those things. He could figure out how to do so. You got it. There was all these parts in the movie that he was supposed to be riding a bike. And um, and then at some point he was like, I don't know if I can ride a bike. I was like, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. And I think Dante was like, I can teach him. And that was enough for me. I was like, Dante's going to teach you. Sounds good enough for me. And then he's like, how long do I have to teach him? I was like, five minutes. Can we can we roll in five minutes? <laughs> and I just remember he got on the bike and just fell right down. We have it in the BTS somewhere. He felt he couldn't even make it down. Like, And he was like, I told you, I don't know how to ride a bike. I'm like, that is not what I heard. I, I heard yes. And I Dante said he could teach you. You know, I figured. How long yeah. does it take for how you to learn how to ride a bike? Minutes? Can you be ready in five minutes? Yeah. <laughs> and um, uh, yeah, so then I was like, okay, uh, I guess we, he's not going to be in the riding bike. So we just kind of had him like go on and off a bike, stand near a bike, you know. You didn't get like, like some amazing green screen of him and <laughs> no, like put a fan no, on him? No, 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 Put no. the bike on a trailer yeah. and drive right? around yeah, the There you go. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, but also, but uh, most of the bike riding stuff, everybody has helmets, you know. And, right, so you yeah. can't tell. Yeah, and okay. I actually got, which I, I mean, maybe you, I'm sure you remember him, a close friend of mine. From a, a long time ago, he used to be in the industry. Who actually introduced me and Aaron Bryan Street Team? Oh, um, okay. He he came to be an extra in the movie, and he was um, cool as hell. Yeah, he's such a great friend of mine. It was actually it was really beautiful because I hadn't seen him in a really long time. We got to mm-hmm. hang out, and um, you know, he, he we got to spend a lot of time together that week. Um, and I was like, well, with the helmet on, you've got tattoos, and driving fast, nobody will know. Nobody will know. So I thought. Oh, I'm such an asshole. Oh, look What's at you. With me? I tried to put it down. Um, anyway, so that was another um, funny part. So the challenge of finding enough people who could ride motorcycles, you know, the challenge of the the sensitive uh, issues in the movie, the challenges of just scheduling this giant. I mean, I never wrote like an 80, 85 page um, movie and, you know, and having th- the right people be in it. I mean, there were just so many um, challenges. But I have to say, once the movie started, it went went so smoothly like all the challenges kind of happened beforehand and i'm I'm really glad and it's because we really had just like such an a-list cast and almost to the point where it made me feel lazy as a director you know because i don't i don't shoot camera you Mm -hmm. know and but i had such i had you know i had quasar and david crawford both who are incredible um don't believe what quasar says about himself he's actually a very good cameraman um and (laughs) takes it very seriously well, at least when he's on my sets, I don't know about his own. But <laughs> you know, he, he's very yeah. self-deprecating, but he does he does his job. He does care, very well. and, he, and he's really good at it. He is know, very he's, good. At he's it. very good at it. He's fantastic. He just likes to complain. I know, I know. Or yeah, but um, <laughs> uh, we could have several other episodes about uh, Quasar. But anyway, I had such a great <laughs> camera team, such a great you know, uh, even just like my PAs were amazing, and the talent was amazing. It almost made me feel lazy as a director because like there wasn't that much for me to really do because everyone was doing such a good job. Like we were getting things perfectly like yeah. on the first take. Wow. And I was like, you know, like I'm like, there's, it's almost like I was searching for things to do differently on the second take just mm-hmm. to, I don't know, feel like an important person mm-hmm. speaking out loud on set. Like, yeah, how about this? You know, but like everything was so perfect. Kira Noir, you know, who had to play Dante's girlfriend, you know, Casey pre-transitions girlfriend. I mean, that was a very, very tough role to play. Um, everybody, everybody was perfect. You know, Charles wow. Dara, Derek Pierce, you know, Aaron Smallhands, who even though he couldn't ride a bike, he did everything, <laughs> everything else perfectly. You know, and even we had other, um, everybody just loves Casey so much. Um, when I told uh, Ricky Greenwood about the movie, you know, who's mm-hmm. directed Casey in, in so many different things, obviously, he's, you know, he's directed me. Um, he's a friend of mine. 
Um, and he rides a motorcycle too. So he came to be in the movie as well. Um, and uh, um, we had this one part that was part of a montage where, um, you know, Casey pre-transition had to be um, like, you know, to show like loyalty in the club, had to like, you know, fight someone at a bar to like, mm-hmm. you know, and I was like, and then we we all got really excited. We're like, we're going to fight you, Ricky. So there's like a really funny scene where Dante like beats the shit out of Ricky. Um, they both did a really good job. I guess Ricky, Ricky really loves like wrestling. So I, I was like, that was like the best like impromptu fight scene I'd ever seen. I'm like, wow. do you just practice this at home? I'm like, is this because I know he watches wrestling? You must just know these like fake, like that was something I wasn't expecting. Um, fight <laughs> anyway. scenes are hard to film. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and you know, because it was just supposed to be for like a quick bit that was part mm-hmm. of the montage, we didn't, we didn't need an epic fight scene, but mm-hmm. we wound up getting one. So, <laughs> um, so that's pretty cool. It's not often that a director gets to have another director, you know, be yeah. a non-sex role on set, yeah. let alone, you know. And I yeah. thought that was just so cool. It's because he really like it, it loves meant so Casey. Much to me. Yeah, he loves Casey. Um, you know, and he's worked with her so many times, and, and, and you know, and it meant a lot. And you know, Ricky is is very busy. Mm-hmm. He's like the busiest director, so he really he put aside time, and we all know that non-sex roles are not like the highest paying roles in right. porn, you know? So for him to put aside a day and made sure to not schedule his own productions just so he could come be a, um, a non-sex role in, in, in this Casey movie, that was like a really incredible yeah. thing. Um, and uh, yeah, it all, it all just worked out really well. Everybody was like A plus, you yeah. know? I couldn't have been, felt very fortunate, felt so lucky. Um, to have been able to do this. Um, I'm, I'm so proud of it. I'm so proud of it. Um, Same here. And in, in my whole career, I've, I've never been able to to do something like this. Um, I can't wait for people to see it. And I think this has been one of those movies so many people in the industry really want to see it. You know? Yeah. So um, speaking of, when does it come out? When does I should probably? September seventh. Yeah, so- <laughs> oh, well, somebody knows. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm, like, I'm, I'm like counting September. the minutes and hours. <laughs> and so September seventh, yeah. it'll be released on close. Adult That's Time. So soon, yeah. I, I believe yeah. it's getting released on Adult Time first, right? Um, I think so. Uh, yeah, I would, I would I have to double check. These things. I have a whole list of, you know, but it's coming out on Adult Time. It's going to be out on DVD. It's it will be on, on Adult Time. For it's sure. going to be, yeah. I think it's coming there first. I, I think that if people, exactly, if you want to know. um all the release dates. I think they should follow either. You should follow Joanna and Casey, which follow means adult time. Adult time. And mm-hmm. actually this is a perfect way to seg and wrap up the interview because the next thing I'm going to ask you guys is to plug all of your social media handles. Okay. So before we do that though, I want to thank you guys both so much for coming. Thank you. This movie sounds amazing. I'm very excited. I, I have a free pass to adult time because I have a channel on there. Actually, this podcast has a channel on adult. Time. Oh yeah. 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 They mm-hmm. had Holly Randall um, unfiltered channel. So and I there's going to be a rated R cut that I believe they're going to put all on YouTube also. Oh, so. fantastic. Yeah. Exactly. So you can watch it. Oh, that's really yeah, cool. Yeah. With, wow. your, with your family. <laughs> I mean, you know, my family, family friendly. <laughs> my family works in porn. So we yeah, can, exactly. We can I watch. I guess you could watch the the X I watched a. Uh, I watched a. Your porn. kid's not quite old enough. I watched the, a porn. No, 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 no. I watched. Well, almost, yeah. I did watch a porn scene with my dad the other day. It was kind of weird. We just watched like the beginning because I wanted to show him the intro of something. Right, right, and then right. once I got to the sex, like, I was like, oh, okay. okay, we're done. Now my dad's yeah. like, no, I can leave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good, Dad. You can watch it in your own time. It's fine. Yeah. It's fine. It's just boring, actually, <laughs> to me, at least. Um, but thank you guys so much for coming on. Thank you, Holly. It's been a pleasure. Congratulations on the movie. Yeah, yeah, we're so excited. Everybody check it out on Adult Time. And um, and thank you, Brie Mills, for... for uh, Letting us make this movie for uh, <laughs> giving us the opportunity and, and a platform um, as well for, yeah. you know, for the story to be told on. Exactly. Thank you as yeah. all time. Thank Absolutely. You. Yeah. So Casey, where can everybody uh, find you on social media? And I'm on any other plugs you want to give. I'm on Twitter, Instagram and Twitch at Casey Kisses XOXO. Um, you guys can uh, support me on OnlyFans by going to I want Casey.com. And if you search Casey Kisses on Pornhub, please don't forget to subscribe. Fantastic. And I know we didn't have time to get to it, but I believe you're going to start producing scenes for Trans Angels as well. Yes, I've produced one already um, with a full crew. Um, during the pandemic, I've produced um, 
like 10 scenes for them, but it was with uh, the, the equipment and the, and the the resources that we had within our home, you know, because during lockdown. But now they've gave me uh, they've given me the budget for a full crew and access to uh, locations and, and uh, all those different, um, I guess, tools and resources that I can use. So I have uh, another one um, being produced on the 23rd. Fantastic. That's so amazing. Go to uh, Trans Angels awesome. to check out Casey's new work behind the camera. And Joanna, where can people find you? Oh, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram, both at Joanna Angel. Both my accounts um, are verified. So please don't follow any other account unless there's a blue check mark next to it. You mean you don't have a special account just for fans? Just for fans where, where I beg for money. You beg for and money. I tell them that I'm going through a divorce and need help. No, oh, okay. I'm not. Don't All give right. that. Just wanted to clarify. Money. Yeah, yeah. Just wanted to clarify that. Um, yeah, then you can follow me on there. You can follow me on TikTok. <gasps> my new passion in life. Oh, yes, yeah. I have seen all those TikTok I videos. I love TikToks. I'm, I'm so a huge much fan. fun. <laughs> really love TikTok. I can't do it. I tried. I'm too boring. For okay, that. you know what, Holly? I said that for a long time. I'm too old. I'm too boring. I can't learn something new. And you know what? I was wrong. No, but and you're I'm sorry for you. <laughs> <laughs> you're great in front of the camera and you're like fun and entertaining. I'm just, I'm just not. Dude, um, she has such an amazing voice too. I was like, this is this is great. I was like, I want to go karaoke with her in small hands. <laughs> I'm not good at singing, but I love to do it. So. I'm so bad at it. Um, yeah, so that, I think what is my TikTok? Name? Joanna Angel X. Um, yeah, and uh, check out the the movies I direct um, on adult time. I've got a I made a whole bunch of good ones this year. Yeah. Really, really proud of everything I got to make this year for Burning Angel and for for other platforms as well um, on Adult Time. It's uh, the exciting thing about working in Adult Time is you never know what you're going to do from month to month. You know, like there's they have so many different things going on. Yeah. And they have the directors work for all of them. So I'm, yeah. I'm glad I got to make a lot of different um, kinds of stuff. Uh, yeah. And uh, I think... And yeah, you can follow me on, on OnlyFans. Uh, yeah. I have one link. Okay, let me just, I did a bad job at plugging myself. Go to everythingjoanna.com and that's where all my links are. Oh my God. Every you could have said buy, that from yeah, the start. You can buy my book. You can, <laughs> <laughs> you can follow me on OnlyFans. You can join my Snapchat. You can do anything. Go, you can do anything. Everythingjoanna.com. Everythingjoanna.com is where all my links are. Awesome. Anyway. Thank you. It's always good to see you. It's always good Ollie, to see you, too. And, yeah, it's good to see you. Absolutely. Yeah, I know. So too, yeah. It's a pleasure being here. And you guys can follow me at Holly Randall on Twitter <laughs> and on Instagram. And of course, if you want to support this podcast, go to patreon.com slash Holly Randall Unfiltered. Thank you guys again so much. Thank you guys for listening or watching and see you next time.